Welcome to the introduction to veterinary protozoology. To start, only two kingdoms of living creatures have members that are true parasites of domesticated animals. These parasites belong to the kingdom Animalia and the kingdom Protista. Most of the parasites of domesticated animals belong to the animal kingdom. So these parasites may include the flukes, tapeworms, roundworms, arthropods, and others. The rest of the animal parasites belong to the kingdom Protista. The kingdom Protista contains the unicellular or the one-celled organisms, better known as the protozoans. This presentation will have the following outline. So the first is the introduction to protozoa. Then we are also going to talk about the morphological structure, respiration, nutrition, excretion, their locomotion, and the reproduction. Protozoa are unicellular, mostly microscopic organisms and are classified under the subkingdom protozoa of the kingdom protista. Protozoa are eukaryotic cells, meaning they have a distinct nucleus as well as organelles such as endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, and others that are found in the cytoplasm. According to Levine, in 1985, about 65,000 species of protozoa have been named, of which mostly are free-living. So when we say free-living, these are organisms that are not dependent on host, on their host, or survival. Of these, nearly 7,000 protozoan species are parasitic both in vertebrate and invertebrate animals. Those parasitic protozoa, which infect domesticated animals and birds, and also those which are zoonotic, will be the main focus of the study of veterinary protozoology. Literally, the word protozoa comes from the root word proto, which means first, and zoa, which means animals. They are the first animal life which appeared in this universe. Examples of protozoa are flagellates and ciliates. So when we say flagellates, these are considered to be the most primitive form of animal life. And the ciliates are considered to be the most highly organized form of protozoa. Classes of protozoa are categorized by a variety of factors. This include the cell architecture, motility, as well as the host. Within the kingdom protista are several phyla, which contain the flagellated protozoans, the amoeboid protozoans, the apicomplexans, and the ciliated protozoans. These phyla contain the primary protozoans that may cause significant pathology in domesticated animals and humans. In veterinary parasitology, the most important phyla are Sarcomastigophora. The Sarcomastigophora contains the amoebae and the flagellates. We also have the phylum ciliophora, which contains the ciliates. And we have also have the phylum apicomplexa, which contains the coccidia, tissue cyst forming coccidia, pyroplasms, and the cryptosporidia. Example of ciliates is the paramecium. For the amoebae, we have the amoeba proteus and the intamoeba. For the flagellates, so a representative species or a representative representative genus under the flagellates is the trypanosoma. Coccidia, examples are the imeria. Tissue cyst forming coccidia, example is the sarcocystis. Pyroplasm, so this includes the babesha and the teleria. And we also have the cryptosporidia. The slides to follow will discuss the important morphological structures of the protozoa. The protozoa have a well-defined nucleus enclosed in a nuclear membrane. This diagram shows the tachyzoid form of the toxoplasma gundi. Toxoplasma gundi is um, an acoxidian uh, protozoa no, under the phylum apicomplexa. So this is the tachyzoid form of the toxoplasma gundi. So when we say tachyzoid form, that is the active feeding stage of the parasite that is usually found in the feces. 
So as you can see here, the parasite has a nucleus as well as uh, within it, now we have the nucleolus. And the nucleus is uh, bounded by the nuclear membrane. Generally, there are two types of nucleus that are found in the protozoa. We have the vesicular and the compact nucleus. So what is a vesicular nucleus? A vesicular nucleus contains a large amount of nucleoplasm and a small amount of chromatin material. So when we say nucleoplasm, you know, that is the type of protoplasm that makes up the cell nucleus. So when we say chromatin, we usually find chromatin as a um, part of the cell or part of the nucleus that contains the DNA as well as uh, some other proteins. So in this diagram, we have here the vesicular nucleus of the intamoeba histolytica. So we have here the nuclear membrane of its nucleus. We also have here the chromatin uh, granules. The, we also have here you know, the endosome or the karyosome. We also have here another diagram showing the vesicular nucleus. This diagram is an illustration of a composite photomicrograph of the ultrastructural details seen in two stages of the life cycle of the parasite in Tamiba histolytica. Stained with iodine is the cystic stage. So in this diagram, we have uh, two life stages of the Intamoeba histolytica, which is an amoeba. This uh, is the cyst form, and these are the trophozoite form of the Intamoeba histolytica. So when we say cyst form, no, that is the resistant dormant stage of the parasite, while the trophozoite form, or these are the active feeding stage of the parasite. So the cyst form is stained with iodine, and the trophozoite are stained with gemsa stain, gemsa. So the cyst, as you can see here, you know, contains the nuclei. So there are four nuclei. And for the trophozoites, we also have here you know, the nuclei of the trophozoite. And uh, we also have here you know, uh, the centrally located cardiosome. So these are examples of the vesicular, you no know, vesicular type of nucleus that is exhibited by the intamoeba histolytica. On the other hand, when we say compact nucleus, now this contains large amount of chromatin material and a small amount of nucleoplasm. So the chromatin material is scattered throughout the nucleus you know, and the shape of the nucleus may vary. You no, know, it may be spherical, oval, cylindrical, sausage shape or horseshoe shape or may take other forms. This diagram illustrates the different types of nucleus of the protozoa. So we have here an example of a vesicular nucleus with a peripherally located chromatin and a centrally located endosome or karyosome. Um, the other forms of the protozoa nuclei may take different shapes no, such as the bean shape macronucleus, the horseshoe shape micronucleus, and the beaded or the chain-like micronucleus. So these are also other forms of the uh, nucleus of the protozoa and again they are differentiated no, according to the amount of the uh, nucleoplasm as well as the chromatin no, and its location location in the nucleus. We also have those protozoa and parasites having two similar nuclei within the individual uh, within the individual uh, protozoa. So these are exhibited by Giardia and the Hexameta. So this diagram shows the trophozoid form of the Giardia lambda. So the when we say trophozoid, now that is the active feeding stage of the parasite. So as you can see here the, the Giardia you know, contains the two similar nuclei within uh, one, uh, one parasite. You know? So these are considered to be similar nuclei because they have the, uh, the same uh, shape as well as size. It is also important to note that the number of nuclei of the Giardia 
differs according to its uh, life stage. Now, so for the trophozoite form of the Giardia, there are two nuclei, two similar nuclei. And for the cyst form of Giardia, we have a four nuclei. So again, when we say trophozoite, now that is the active feeding stage of the parasite, while the cyst form is the, the resistant, the dormant uh, stage of the uh, protozoan parasite. We also have those uh, protozoan species having two dissimilar nuclei, as in the case of the balantidium. So balantidium is uh, a genus or a genera no, under the phylum ciliophora, particularly the ciliate parasite. So this is the cyst form of the balantidium having a cyst wall and within it we have here the presence of the two dissimilar nuclei, the macronucleus and the micronucleus. So these two forms of nuclei have varied functions. The macronucleus govern the cytoplasmic function of the parasite, while the micronucleus govern the sexual function of the parasite. So this is a cyst form, meaning that, that this is the dormant resistant form of the protozoan parasite. So as this is a ciliate, ciliated uh, protozoan, so it also contains cilia no, along its uh, wall. This is another uh, diagram showing the trophozoite and the cyst form of the balantidium coli. So the balantidium coli is a protozoan species having two dissimilar nuclei, the macronuclei, the macronucleus and the micronucleus. So this one here is the trophozoite form of the balantidium coli and this is the cyst form of the parasite. The protozoan cell also contains the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is the extranuclear part of the protozoan cell. It may be differentiated into an outer ectoplasm that lies under the wall of the parasite and an inner endoplasm immediately surrounding the nucleus. The ectoplasm is um, considered to be hyaline, no? it's uh, homogeneous in nature, and the endoplasm is granular and contains uh, granules, vacuoles, and sometimes pigments. This diagram shows the cell structure of the amoeba showing the endoplasm and the ectoplasm. The endoplasm is described to be um, clear and watery, while the ectoplasm is said to be granulated. Within the cytoplasm are organelles, and one of that is the contractile vacuole. So these are mainly occur in free-living aquatic protozoa. They are extremely small, rounded, floating vacuoles appearing in the cytoplasm which coalesce to form contractile vacuoles having osmoregulatory function and they also maintain the water balance in the body. The diagram shows a protist, no, paramecium aurelia, with a contractile vacuole as shown in the arm. Another structure in the cytoplasm are the food vacuoles. The food vacuoles are the sites where food particle passes and digestion takes place. Food vacuoles are also the seeds of enzymatic activity. So examples of protozoa with food vacuoles are the balantidium coli and the intamoeba histolytica. This diagram shows the structure of the food vacuole as illustrated or as exhibited by these uh, a pi complex and protozoan parasite. Let's now proceed to the nutrition. So in case of the protozoa, nutrition are of three types. First is the holophytic. We also have the holozoic and the saprozoic. So when we say holophytic, these are protozoa that synthesize the carbohydrate with the help of chlorophyll and in the presence of light. So they are uh, exhibited by free living protozoa. Examples of these are the phytoplagellates. Holozoic protozoa utilize preformed food material either by pseudopodia or cytostome. 
So this is an example of a protozoa that exhibits the cytostome or the cell mouth. So this is the ciliate paramecium. We also have the pseudopodia. So the pseudopodia is exhibited by the parasites now such as amoeba. Pseudopodia encircle the solid particles inside food vacuoles into which digestive enzyme is secreted. Saprozoic protozoa absorb organic material dissolved in solution through the general surface of the body by diffusion. For the excretion, since all the cells are in contact with the external aqueous environment, protozoa excrete using simple diffusion through the cell membrane. One of the important structure for excretion is the contractile vacuole. These are organelles that are specialized for water expression by active transport in freshwater organisms. So this is a protozoa you know, with a contractile vacuole. And again, the contractile vacuole is important for excretion. For respiration, the protozoa do not have a specialized structure you know, for respiration. Instead, the respiratory surface of the protozoa is through the plasma membrane. There are two types of respiration according to the availability of oxygen. So first is the aerobic respiration. So this requires oxygen. And uh, the, this occurs in the malarial parasite, you know, the plasmodium, leishmania, and the imeria. We also have those protozoa that do not require uh, oxygen for respiration. So this includes the trichomonas and the amoebae. For their locomotion, the protozoa move either by gliding or by means of pseudopodia, flagella, and cilia. Gliding movement is seen in those protozoan forms which do not possess any flagella or cilia. So examples of the protozoa that moves by gliding are the toxoplasma and the sarcocystis. So these two species are under the phylum apicomplexa. They do not possess flagella or cilia. The diagram shows the structure of the toxoplasma gundi, or the trophozoic of the toxoplasma gundi, and we also have here the high-resolution sarcocystis. We also have those group of protozoa that move via pseudopodia. So the pseudopodia are characteristic of the superclass sarcodina protozoa. So when we say sarcodina, these are represented by the amoeba or amoebae. So the amoebae are protozoans that move via pseudopodia. So when we say pseudopodia, that comes from the word pseudo meaning false and podia meaning foot. So this is referred to as also known as the false feet. So this diagram here shows the structure of the amoeba or the amoeboid structure. Um, and in this diagram, you have here the presence of the pseudopodium. We also have those protozoa that move via flagellum or flagella. So the flagellum is defined as a long whip-like uh, appendage. And one of its main functions is to create current and help in the movement of the parasite. So for its component, now it is composed of a central eggshell filament, the axonym, surrounded by the contractile cytoplasmic sheet. So there are, there may be one or more flagella, and in some form, the flagella may be attached to the body of the protozoa by an undulating membrane. So this uh, form or this flagella occur in the subphylum mastigophora. The diagram shows the representative flagellate protozoa, the Tritrichomonas fetus. Tritrichomonas fetus is a flagellated protozoa of the reproductive tract of the cattle. So in this uh, species, there are three anterior flagella. We have the presence of the undulating membrane and a trailing no posterior flagellum. 
Protozoa may also move via cilia. So cilia or cilium is a fine protoplasmic eyelash-like organelle originating from the basal granule. So this is um, exhibited by the ciliates. Example is the balantidium coli. Aside from uh, its locomotory function, it also aids in the ingestion of food. This diagram is a motile trophozoite form of the representative cilia, balantidium coli. Uh, Balantidium coli is a ciliated protozoan of the intestinal tract of pigs. So the cilia of the of this protozoa are uh, originates now from the basal granule that is embedded in the pellicle or the ectoplasm of the parasite. Let's now proceed to the types of reproduction in protozoa. So the life cycle of the protozoa are varied. It may be direct or indirect. So it includes some form of sexual and some form of asexual reproduction. Typically, a species multiply asexually for a variable period and follows a sexual process. The vegetative forms of the parasitic protozoa, feeding, growing, and dividing, are called as the trophozoites. Examples of the asexual reproduction of the protozoa are the binary fission, budding, multiple fission, and sporogony. So when we say asexual reproduction, these do not involve the gametes. For the sexual reproduction, so this involves the fusion of the gametes. Now these are the types of sexual reproduction for protozoa includes the conjugation and the syngamete. In binary fission, there is nuclear division or karyokinesis followed by division of the cytoplasm or cytokinesis. And this forms two similar daughter organisms. The binary fission is considered to be the most common form or the most common type of asexual multiplication for protozoa. This diagram shows the, an example of a binary fission and this is considered to be longitudinal binary fission because this occurs now along the long axis of the protozoan parasite. So this type of uh, binary fission is exhibited by flagellated protozoa. This diagram shows the binary fission in protozoans. So the flagellated, uh, the flagellated protozoa, such as the trypanosoma, exhibits a longitudinal binary fission, while the ciliates or the paramecium exhibits a transverse type of binary fission. In the case of amoeba, now because of their asymmetric body, the binary fission occurs in any plane of their body. Another type of asexual reproduction is budding. So in this type, a small daughter individual separates from the side of the mother cell and grow to full size. So this is considered to be an amitotic division. So there are two types of budding. We have the endodiogeny and the endopolygeny. So for the endodiogeny, that is also known as the internal budding. So in this type, Two daughter cells are formed within the mother cells and then break out after destroying it, now, as shown in this figure. So this occurs now in the toxoplasma. So this diagram is an example of the endodiogeny or the internal budding in toxoplasma gundi. So another form of budding is the endopolygeny. So this occurs if more than two daughter cells are formed by internal budding. So this is again exhibited by the apicomplexan parasites, the toxoplasma gundi, as well as the sarcocystis. So these are uh, again asexual forms of reproduction as, and as you can see here, these parasites also exhibit no other forms of uh, reproduction, this, the, such as now the uh, schizogony. It also exhibits the endodiogeny. This is another diagram that shows the apicomplexan cell division flexibility. So this is a composite 
using a series of electron micrograph to summarize the processes of asexual multiplication within toxoplasma. And uh, as you can see here, the toxoplasma gundi reproduced via budding. Now we have here the, the endodiogeny, which produces two daughter cells, and the endopolygeny, which produces more than two daughter cells. So another type of apicomplexa is the sarcocystis, so it also exhibits endopolygeny. So aside from budding, the apicomplexan parasites, now these apicomplexan parasites also exhibits another type of asexual reproduction, which is the schizogony. Well, let's now proceed to schizogony. So when we say schizogony, the other name of that are multiple fission or mirogony. So in multiple fission, the nucleus divides several times mitotically before the cytoplasm does. The dividing cell is known as the schizont. No? And the schizont, meront, or the segmenter. And the daughter cells are called as the merozoids. This is a prolific type of asexual multiplication seen particularly in the apicomplexa. So when we say apicomplexa, now this includes the imeria, uh, toxoplasma, sarcosystis, cryptosporidium, plasmodium, hemoproteus, babesia, teleria, cytoxoon, and others. This diagram shows the multiple fission in plasmodium. So in multiple fission, you know, so we have here, uh, as seen in the diagram, you know, we have here a cell, a protozoa, the plasmodium, and the nucleus. So in multiple fission, the nucleus you know, will divide mitotically first, and the dividing cell is known as the schizon. So this, um, the nucleus you know, will undergo multiple mitosis. After the nucleus has divided, it will be followed by cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm to produce daughter cells, multiple daughter cells or merozoids. Sporogony is a term used to describe the cell divisions that occur within an apicomplexan or cyst. So an example of an apicomplexa is the imeria. So this diagram is an example of an imerian oocyst. The left is uh, an unsporulated, the right is sporulated. So as a result of the sporogony, mature sporulated oocyst will contain two or more infective organisms called sporozoids, often arranged in bundles within separate enclosing walls called sporocysts. The number of the sporocysts and the sporozoids within an oocyst is a useful characteristic for diagnostic purposes. So as you can see here, the Imerian oocyst is contained within, um, it contains you know, four sporozoids that is contained you know, within the sporocyst. This uh, sporulated oocyst uh, Sporulated osis is formed through sporogony, and sporogony occurs in the external environment. These oocysts are found in the feces. So this diagram shows the sporulated imeria oocyst. So the oocyst enter the environment in the feces of an infected host, but the oocyst of imeria are unsporulated and therefore not infective when passed in the feces. Under favorable conditions of oxygen, humidity, uh, temperature, the oocysts sporulate and become infective in several days. During sporulation, the amorphous protoplasm develops into small bodies called sporozoids within secondary cysts known as the Sporocysts. So the sporocyst are sac-like structure that contains the sporozoids. In the Imerian species, the sporulated oocyst has four 
sporocyst, each containing two sporozoids. In other species, such as the isospora, the sporulated oocyst has two sporocysts, each containing four sporozoids. So again, this is the sporulated oocyst of the Imeria species. The sporulated oocyst of the Imeria species has four sporocysts. Each of the sporocysts contains two sporozoids. Again, the sporulated oocysts are the infective stage of the are, are considered to be infective no, because they are capable of infecting the host. They are usually found in the feces no, of the animal. This is another diagram showing the sporulated oocyst of the Imeria scabra and the cystoisospora suis from swine. So note that the spore, the Imeria noscapra has four sporocysts. So this each of these sporocysts contains two sporozoids. For the cystoisospora suis, it has two sporocysts, and each of the sporocysts contain four sporozoids. This diagram shows the complete life cycle of a typical Imeria species. The typical life cycle consists of the sexual and the asexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction consists of the gamogony or the gametogony, and the asexual stages are represented by sporogony and merogony. Merogony Occur and the gamogony occurs within the host, while sporogony occurs within the in the external environment. So once the um, once outside the host, so we have here the oocyst. The oocyst is passed in the feces, and once outside the host, now the oocyst must undergo sporulation before it will become infective to the host. So again, for, spor for the oocysts to sporulate, you know, there are certain conditions that may must be met. You know? So for example, you know, the presence of oxygen, moisture, and shade, such as direct UV, sunlight will kill the oocyst quickly. And generally, a temperature less than the body temperature of the host are necessary for its survival. So the the zygote within the oocyst may undergo meiotic division and it will form sporocyst. Again, in the case of the Imeria, the Imerian oocyst, the sporulated oocyst of the Imeria has four sporocysts and each of the sporocysts contains two sporocytes. This is another diagram of a generalized life cycle for parasites within the Imeria genus showing the sporogony in the environment, a sexual replication or schizogony within the host, and the sexual replication or the gametogony within the host. Let's now proceed to the sexual reproduction of the protozoa. First, we have the conjugation. So in conjugation, two individuals come together temporarily and fuse a long part of their length. There is temporary contact between them during which time the exchange of some nuclear material takes place after which they are separated. This type of nuclear reorganization revitalizes the organism. And this is exhibited by ciliates, example, the Balantidium coli. This diagram shows the structure of the Balantidium coli, showing the presence of the micronucleus and the macronucleus 
that are important in the conjugation process. So another type of uh, protozoa that exhibits conjugation is the paramecium caudatum. So this is a diagram you know, showing the process of the conjugation you know, in the paramecium. So we have here you know, the uh, two paramecia. You know, they come together side by side and they form a cytoplasmic bridge. Then uh, the micronuclei you know, will undergo uh, meiosis. Then uh, mitosis you know, of one of the micronucleus and the others will disintegrate. After that, there is uh, an exchange of the micronuclei, you know, as seen in this figure. The cells separate, micronuclei disintegrate, and the micronuclei will fuse. New macronucleus will form from the dividing micronuclei. So this is a summary you know, of the conjugation process that is seen in the paramecium. Another type of uh, se sexual reproduction is the syngamy. So when we say syngamy, that is the fusion of the gametes to, fu to form the zygote. So there are many forms of syngamy and some of that are isogamy and the anisogamy. So if the gametes are similar, so that the, or isogametes, now the process is called isogamy. When the gametes are dissimilar or the anisogametes, the process is known as the an isogamy. So for an isogamy, you know, this involves the fusion of a microgamete to a macrogamete. So this is an illustration of the macrogamete you know, of the Toxoplasma gundi in a transverse section showing the main internal structures. And we also have here another illustration of a microgamete of the Toxoplasma gundi in longitudinal section.